Well, Tom, thank you very much for coming in today. Welcome to, to Sunderland. Just tell us a little bit about, first of all, the pride you felt in, in the offer that got put to you, at becoming a, a member of the, the board, and also how it came about as well. Um, well, it's been in the offing for a few weeks. I've been having a few discussions with uh, people in my own business, Stuart and Charlie, and um, you know, it's something that I've wanted to do for a long time. Um, the pride, Craigie, that's just amazing. I've actually got a regret, actually. Uh, I just want it's just, I wish my mum and dad were still around, you know. Um, that would have just been the icing on the cake, but it's been absolutely fantastic. I mean, you've got to remember for me, I mean, um, I could have signed for Sunderland as a kid, you know, and I, I actually signed for Burnley um, because my parents thought there was a lot of bad lads in Sunderland at that time. Don't know if that's changed, by the way, but um, no, it's, it's really great and uh, had a lot of supportive messages. You know, a lot of, I know a lot of people in Sunderland, you know, a lot of fans and things like that, and um, it's been great. Just sort of seeing you speak there, you can just see the emotion coming out, you can see the emotion in, in, in your eyes as well. It's obviously a club that means a hell of a lot to you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and, and for a long time. I mean, um, you know, I still think I can play. I can't, unfortunately, but I mean, you know, I played on Roker Park, you know, Sunderland Schoolboys um, against Leeds, and I ran after this guy for about 30 minutes, never touched the ball, but he didn't score. So, like, you know, like, no, no, uh, it's always been there, you know. Um, so I'm against Sheffield Wednesday, my dad took us and, you know, um, give me edge away here, like, but um, let's just say I've been there uh, many, many years, you know. Had some cracking times at uh, the old Roker Park, you know, I mean, it's not a secret, I'm from. Uh, uh, the, the gaming industry and uh, I used to have, um, we used to have a, a little betting shop at the bottom of the Roker end, it was a porter cabin really, thank God it was as well because I remember Sunderland once scoring a late goal and we beat Newcastle 2-1 and I had about, um, had about 15 to 20 grand to pay out and I had three grand and they nearly picked that porter cabin up and down and one kid says to us, I'll never forget to this day, he says, come on, mate. He says, I want my money. I need my money to get the bus home. And I said, but what happened if you missed the penalty? You would have to walk home anyway. So, like, you know, just great times, you know. But, um, yeah, and then, of course, you know, moving into the new stadium, um, I opened 35 betting kiosks around the ground, you know. And uh, I remember the opening day vividly, you know, when there was wet paint and stuff all over the place. And... Uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but I, I just remember him saying, like, you know, this looks just total chaos. And he said, uh, he said, uh, some people see problems. He says, I see progress. And, you know, he was spot on. And it's a bit like where we are now. I actually see progress where we are now, you know. And through your business as well, you, you came into the club last year, um, heavily involved with, with, with BetDAC. Yeah. Um, so you got, you got to sort of come into the club a little bit and see what went on behind the scenes. and and sort of really get a grip to, to grips with what, the, what went on at the club. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And, um, you know, um, I mean, that was the easiest negotiation I've ever done in my life. I mean, we were going to sign the deal regardless what my company thought. That was going to happen anyway, you know. Um, but no, I think, I think it's very, very important. And, um, yeah, absolutely, everybody judges what goes on the pitch, and rightly so. But I, I've met some fantastic people behind the scenes here, you know, some of the, the marketing team. Um, uh, some of the people have actually moved on into different roles, but like, the, there's, there's lots of teams behind the scenes here at Sunderland that do a great job day in and day out, you know. And I don't know if it necessarily gets appreciated um, because of the what goes on in the football pitch, but like, um, we've got some at the core of this club. We've got some fantastic people, and I've had the pleasure of working with them for the last few years. You know, it's been great. And so with that in mind, what, what do you feel needs to change? What, what will you be looking to implement in, in your role? Um, well, that's a really good question. I mean, again, it goes back to the pitch. I understand all of that. But I think like the best way I could put that is um, in my business life, all I've ever done is surround myself by good, positive people, people that can make a difference, you know, and um, they're not frightened to say what's being said. So, you know, anybody that's worked with me will will tell you I'm not shy of coming forward and that's not going to change for anybody uh, but you know I think but there's a difference it's about adding a positive contribution you know I mean uh, I don't know the full remit of what's required but like I do know 
running a business, there's an awful lot to do. And if you've got some good people around you, help you making those decisions to make the right ones, you know, they all lead to the, a positive end result. So I'd clean the toilets. If the cloud, you know, it, it, something needs to be done. It, it needs to be done. And I think, I don't know, I just like to think, bring a positive vibe around to the place, you know. And um, like anything, you know, I know the fans are frustrated at the moment. I'm one of them, you know. I've only missed four games home and away this season, the cup games and things like that. And I'm a bit frustrated like everybody else. But, you know, if you can join it all together as a team, that's a really, really strong thing here. I don't think you can get it many ways in uh, many different places in the country, to be honest with you. Um, so yeah, so like, let's see. But like, you know, it's, it, it might sound a bit paralysing. It's not meant to be. Things have to be done on a daily basis. An extra pair of hands um, always it never goes amiss, does it? And just finally, someone who lives and breathes the club has been brought up in the area as a Sunderland fan. Who's got friends who are Sunderland fans? I suppose what would it mean to you to to, to better be a part of a successful journey of the club, but also. In terms of mentioning your mum and dad, first of all, yeah, making them pr proud of you as well. Um, well, nothing changes really in in the sense. I mean, you know, I've been up and down and all over the place with Sunderland, you know, and I actually like the I like the getting there bit, you know, like the promotions and that into the Premiership. Didn't actually enjoy it in the Premiership, to be honest with you, but um, I mean, clearly. It's one step at a time, you know, let's get out of this league, it's hard. Um, we are where we are, let's just, let's just face up to that. But like, I, I just think, you know, on and off the pitch, all of the, the group, if you can all come together, I think uh, it's, a, it's a really positive force. And, you know, adding some positivity and some good decision making off the pitch uh, leads to good results on the pitch, doesn't it, you know? So, um, I don't know if that answers your question or not, but like, um, what will it mean? Um, well, I'm sort of in my little dream at the moment. Um, I don't know. I don't know what that feels like, you know. But like, uh, I'll tell you when we get there, you know. 